It was supposed to be a minor surgery, just an hour under anesthesia. You felt totally safe. Now you've awoken inside a drop pod, punching through the atmosphere of a distant rim world. Aside from a slick mystery goo all over your body, you are totally naked with no preparations, no supplies, no tools. Can you survive? The answer is probably no. But... So, first off, let's look at our health. We're good. Let's look at our needs. We're uncovered. Oh, I forgot. Our religion hates nudity. And he's gold. Wait a minute. Let's rewind real quick. And so basically, here is me making the religion that we're going to be using for this RimWorld playthrough. This RimWorld playthrough is on Randy Random Hardest Difficulty Naked Survival. I've been playing it over on my Twitch and decided we'd make a YouTube video out of the um, VOD. So this is me picking this bot to give myself the best chances of surviving. Mind you, I'm not good at this game and barely have any hours. It just spiked my interest, so I decided to buy it and give it a try on the hardest difficulty to learn the best. So here is me being very methodical of the person we picked to be our first colonist. You see, since we only get one colonist, we really need them to be well-rounded and have some essential things if we want our colonist to have a colony of having a chance to survive and grow bigger. So we have to pick a colonist that plays a really good role, has a really well-rounded skill set. And so it took me quite a while. You see, I go through quite a few people before I finally decide to pick Blue Ducky, as we, we named him on screen. His name was Blue Duck, but we added Ducky. He has some good skills that are hopefully going to help us. So now that we're back to reality, our first order of business is to survey the area and figure out what world we're dealing with. Where are we? What's our terrain look like? And where can our first structure be? We need to find housing before nightfall. We can find a ton of old world artifacts throughout the map, and those are going to help us kind of plan our future out and figure out what we can do with the land. We're also going to survey where we can't build, and we're going to figure out where the best farming spots would be so that we can know where to farm throughout this playthrough and where would be the best spot to set up shop. Unfortunately, I decide to that all the farm areas are too far away from this tiny structure that I think will make a good home. It will require the least amount of resources to make a permanent shelter, so I decide to claim it, set up some stockpiles, and set up some dumping zones so that we can start to get our first base set up to be able to survive our first night. As we start to claim some territory and set up the stockpile zones, I start to realize a problem. We don't have any food. Blue is starving. And blue doesn't have any possessions, meaning if we want to get food, we are going to have to find our food. So while I'm setting up these stockpiles, I'm thinking about how we're going to get our food. And I kind of make a big mistake here. I'm thinking about cutting plants to find food, but I don't find berries right away, so I start to search for them. And, and I kind of overlook them because I don't know what they look like, and I try to find some animals. This is when I realize I don't have a way to hunt animals, or at least I didn't think I had a way to hunt animals. So this is where we start to make a series of unfortunate mistakes. We start to build a hunting, or we start to build a crafting spot to try to craft here. Overlooking the fact that making a club would probably be a better option, we decide a short bow is the option to do. Because hunting requires you to have a bow in this game unless you draft the colonist and just make them fight the animal. Something I wasn't thinking about here. So we're going to need to cut some wood, which is what we're doing right here to try to prepare for being able to build our shortbow and go hunting. As food is quickly going to become a problem, I decided to take initiative early. A good decision as it takes me a little bit to figure out all, what, all of my plan here and kind of formulate the plan inside my head. So as Blue heads over to chop some wood, I start to think about what we need to do to the house to be prepared to live in it. What we need to do is we need to get some furniture down. We need a sleeping spot so that he has a spot to sleep. It's going to be cold and it's going to be hard, but at least he can sleep. We're also going to need a meditation spot because he's religious and a ritual spot so that we can hopefully do some rituals. This is when I realize he's freezing. I also try to make him a religious leader at this point and realize we can't because he's simply too cold. That's going to be important later because the rituals are a little bit broken and I have some tricks up my sleeve to make this playthrough a little bit more bearable. I also decide a, a campfire is a good idea here as that's going to allow him to be able to heat himself up at nighttime and hopefully not get hypothermia throughout the night. Luckily for us, Blue has a trait called acidic, which means he doesn't really care about his environment or the condition of his food, which is going to make this first day a lot easier. 
Now, we're going to spend a little bit of time working on his schedule. We need to get a work-life balance here, at least a work-sleep balance, and some recreation mixed in. Otherwise, he's going to go insane, and you don't really want an insane colonist, especially when you only have one, and starvation is at the forefront of every single day. So we're going to be managing our time here. This begins our second downfall, which is wasting a bit of time trying to just get our situation going. We're not really wasting food, though, as we have the game mostly paused, but here we're getting a lot of wood we don't really need. We, we need a little bit, but not this much. We're, we're making mistakes here, but we're learning, and that's what's really important. So Blue's going to be getting a tree so that we can make a short bow. We need 30. And then we're just going to keep getting wood because I'm not paying attention to the numbers as well as I should. I'm also going to be using this time to look at our campfire and see if there's any way we can use it to get ourselves another colonist. This is a cheeky little strategy you can use if you have the um, Ideologies DLC, using it to your advantage, which is something I'm going to have to do if I want to survive through this playthrough. Right now we're finally being able to get our bow made. It's a poor quality bow, unfortunately, so we're going to equip it and try to go hunting. This is when it takes me forever to find the animal we're going to want to hunt. Now Blue is going and he's going to be cutting more wood. But now we're going to go try to find an animal. So I'm prioritizing small animals that he's going to be able to kill really easily. And I'm doing a lot of analyzing here because I don't want to waste time as he's hungry and nightfall is closing in on our first night. And we need him to get some sleep if we expect him to work the rigorous hard hours he's going to have to put in to survive. So I think a rat is probably our best bet, but then I decide otherwise. I'm thinking about maybe we need to prioritize what's close rather than what's really, really small. This is when I decide to start looking around the map as our best option, so I look around the map to see if we can find anything, and I come to the conclusion that a squirrel is the closest thing to us, when in reality it was not. I changed my mind pretty quickly upon realizing that there was a rat much closer, so eventually I'll make that realization and actually hunt the rat. Now, our shooting skill is not very good. In fact, we're more of a melee character anyway, and I didn't realize this. This is something I do realize in the future, however. But at this exact moment, we make the mistake of deciding to go hunt with our bow. It's also starting to rain, which means the temperatures are going to drop, and I'm kind of concerned about that because we don't have any clothes. So he's eventually going to actually get the rat after firing many shots, making me happy, and allowing us to survive our first night, at least hopefully. We haven't gotten that far just yet, but as we make our way back to the settlement to be able to butcher this animal, we are setting up the butcher spot and setting up a bill to always butcher the creatures. We won't need kibble because I don't really like keeping animals, and I don't think we will. It's a lot of work, and it's not much reward, at least as of right now. So as Blue's on his way back to being able to butcher his animal and sleep for his first night, he wants to go meditate, we can't let him. He has a slight break risk, a little concerning being we've only been here for one for a, one day, but he had a rough first day. He's going to have a rough couple days considering that he landed completely naked. Hunger is his biggest issue though. As he's, he relaxes and eats in his little shack, he decides to sit by the fire before he goes to bed as I realize he ate without a table, which is a bad thing. We then decide to work on building his house, building his walls here in about a second. And then he decides to go to bed and we'll work on building the rest of his shack tomorrow. Night night blue, I hope you sleep well. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked this video, please comment and tell me you did and I should make more in this format as it's really a new format for me and it takes a lot of time. As well as I'm streaming on Twitch somewhat regularly, so if you want to watch me play RimWorld live, there's where you can do it and there's also a chance you get to name a colonist.